Production Technology game. And in here I'm displaying the blue technology um, screen paint that we have. This is actually an extremely advanced screen. It makes um, 720p projectors. And I have a demonstration today on a knockoff projector on the screen. As I said before, we don't support knockoff projectors. But if you happen to have one laying around, you know what I mean, or if you brought one back, so then um, you can see what the results of how a knockoff will look on blue technology. Now, uh, we're going to be doing this demonstration on my NEC uh, short throw projector, ultra short throw projector. This is the projector I purchased for around $59. That's it. Let me set the screen up. I just got finished doing a pre recorded demonstration for companies on the blue technology. I told you quite a few people are interested in that technology. Um, let me grab something real quick so we can get started. Now, Monday morning, I will be discussion with my patent attorney on how far the progress has come along with paperwork for this technology so we can start getting ready with a pre-order date so we can get on market um for right now i want to do this and uh um, do this in a form of uh of hopefully have but that's not going to happen. What we're going to do is we're going to have it when it first comes out, it'll be available in one and two quarts only. Get that hook correctly. It'll be available in one and two quarts only. That's it. When we first start off, uh, from there we'll gradually move up to um, other, um, other like larger sizes, like maybe we'll get into um, a. Uh, one gallon, two gallon, maybe a three gallon. But for right now, it's going to be one to two quarts. Let me get me a charger for the battery. Now I have blue embedded in my house. In three areas of the house, I have one in the gaming room. That screen is a blue screen. I have another one. I had it fit the size just right, but I had to move it. So I love lens shift. There's no reason why I love lens shift, but I had to move it because um, I did a demonstration over uh, this, uh, a pre-recorded live. And I did that one because when I do, sometimes when I do the streams, the video comes up a bit choppy. But I did a pre recorded version of it. Let's plug it in for my charger. So, what is a projector compatible with? Well, just about any projector I can possibly throw at it. I have quite a lot of projectors, so it's not going to be hard throwing everything at it. I possibly can. And when I mean that it's versus everything, it's going to versus everything we can get our hands on. Literally, whatever we can get our hands on that will allow us to get our hands on it. So, um, right now, this early this morning I got up, I tried to place several orders for somebody, didn't go through. Um, but I was successful on getting paint from other uh, merchants. Also, too, um, I was able to get a bunch of samples from Elite Screens. Uh, I am going through right now through DMP Supernova. We used to call them directly because... Um, they're a little different when they do their samples. You can't just go in and buy a sample from them. You have to contact them, email them, and then, you know, I get my credit card number, and then from there they go and they, they send me over the sample. So it's a little different from them. I'm going in first to check in to see exactly, because I don't want to call there and ask for something and get something I already have. So i got to do some research on the Internet to find out exactly what they have new, what's on the market, and then I'll go and ask for that particular sample sheet that I need. So... I have a list upstairs of companies that I'm going to be going right down the road getting whatever I can from them. Um, there's another company, I can't pronounce the name if I'm saying it wrong, but I think it's L U X I N I. I think whatever it's called, I think that's what it's called. That's one company I will be contacting Monday. I did email them asking for samples. Uh, they'll be sending that over to me shortly. So, like I said, we're going to test it against everything. And then what we're going to do is um, another test we're going to be doing with the black technology, because I said, we're doing something different with that outside. We want to dominate that field outside because all those white screens out there need to be converted to black tech. 
You've seen the advancements of black technology outside. You just get so much more on top of that. Your projector can activate at an earlier time without the fact that you got to activate the projector between 9 and 10. And by then at the party, the kids are tired, they're irritated, they want to go home, and people got to be up for work the next day. You can start that party off at 6 o'clock or at 7 o'clock and have a fantastic time and won't lose any of your picture quality whatsoever. So we're going to be doing demonstrations against some of the screens that are designed for outside um, versus the technology we have. We're going to get a couple of inflatable blow-up screens. We're doing a few of those in the backyard and stuff like that. You know what I mean? To get the yard master, all that good stuff. So we can do things differently this year. All right, so let's begin. Turn off the PS4. Um, we're doing this on a 720p projector. Keep in mind, it's a 720p. Some people look at this and think it's a 1080p projector. It's not. It's a 720p projector. That's it. I'm going to be randomly jumping from video to video, so I can show you, you know, as much as I possibly can. Now, one of the things I'm going to be doing too with the blue is I'm going to be painting a smaller screen. We're going to be sticking that in the middle of the floor and walk around the screen and show you the screen picks up 190 degree viewing angle anywhere you hit that screen. It's going to pull that image. Now, see the detail on that screen. How beautiful that looks. Like I said, no calibration needed. Whatever technology, look, put it I build my technology on how I use my screens every day. I hate the calibrate projector. I hate it. So the way I develop my technology is I never have to calibrate. I just turn it on, adjust a few things, and I'm done. And that's it. Walk away. You've never, ever seen me calibrate one projector in any of my demonstrations. You go all the way back to 2010. I'll tell you right there. I hate calibrating. This screen right here, this blue technology, but that, and this has 100% coding in it. The other screens we dealt with like early this morning, when I did the demonstration against that black silver, that black silver is quite impressive for a great screen. Produced a contrast level that like five or six high performance screens couldn't match it. They're all gray. And then turned around and I threw that against a black screen. A black screen absorbed that screen and turned it, turned the black screen, took the gray screen. And absorbed that screen in and turned it into its match the color, the brightness off of it. We ever take sample sheets and make them disappear off the screen. That's coding technology we developed. Now the blue on the other hand, the blue is something extremely freaky. Like I said, 100% coding capabilities. White levels on the screen are insane pulls contrast levels, pulls colors, and it can do it on a projector that's old, outdated, that you'll probably end up paying because the projector's so old, probably under 100 bucks for it. Let's go get something else. Trying to hit as much natural color as I possibly can.
See, by using an older projector, it just shows you that the screen does all the work. No $3,000, no $3,800 projector, no $1,500 projector, not even needed. If I had had this technology, I wouldn't have bought that Optima GT5600. Even though the technology we had basically made the Optima GT5600 look incredible. Still, I could have saved myself, oh, it's $1,400 I paid for that projector. I could have got this projector poppy for around two, three hundred dollars at this particular time. Yeah, no 1080p required. No 4K required. Within the timeline, by the time the blue launches, we would have dominated every screen that we've gotten our hands on with this technology. You see what it's doing with 720p. Imagine if I go out and buy myself a 4K projector right now. Buying a 4K defeats the purpose of what the technology should be doing. I shouldn't have to spend 4K. I should be able to get a 720p projector and get a beautiful picture off it with no problem. Without having any extra bells and whistles. Back some. So we see how much lights in the environment. We always get a commercial. Let's move on from the commercial. There we go. Commercials are good too. You get a chance to see what it, what it looks like with commercials running.
And as I said before, the surface is blue. If we're projecting a blue, a white image off a blue surface, then that white image should become blue. Everything on this screen right now should be tainted the color blue some way. But it's not, because as I said before, it's not the surface that makes the technology. It's a coating within the surface that makes the technology. So all the other screens we have in here do have coating in them. The blue is the only one that has 100%. That's why it has ambient light rejection times 15. So we'll begin the test. The sample sheets where we can get contrast levels. Oh, and I do, you know the whole rules. You know the whole how we do things. We have to test it on everything and everything we get our hands on. Like I said, it has to be done. I would really like to have screen innovation here with it, but it's not going to happen. As I said before, they're not going to do that. They're never going to allow a sample sheet to hit that screen. No, they're never going to allow that to happen. Why do you think when we basically made the statement that we were going to be testing against the technology, people started backing away from it quickly? As we know, one individual who blocked his account to make sure that none of that landed over here to come near this screen but we have enough here to do it so we're going to get we're going to we're going to end up getting hit in some roadblocks but that's good that's good that's a good sign for me it's not a bad sign for me when i see people crumble and do so it's not a bad sign for me it's a good sign for me you're fearing the technology or not even at 100 percent complete yet there was still some more time, some, some more work has to be done with it. It was at a 12 at one point, and it was amped up to a 15. So now it's back down to being somewhere around 50% done. It's still a lot more work that has to be done with it. I can see improvements in the screen that we can actually make it better than what it is and what you're seeing. But what better way to actually show off the technology's capability than doing it with a 720p projector in a fully lit environment? And keep in mind, my projector is not sitting right up on top of my screen. My ultra short throw is still doing eighth row distance. Most ultra short throw setups sit one foot away from the screen, sometimes a half a foot from the screen. Mine's probably sitting somewhere between two feet away from the screen right now. So there's light passing by right across. and close. Do some contrast with some outer space. I'm even going as far as getting customized containers for this technology. They will be blue. But might as well nice touch to it.
Now, any company that decides that they do not want to be tested side by side to the blue technology, I'll leave my email information at the bottom. You can email me and request for me not to put your screen against it. I will remove it. Where are these coming from? They got this one, this little girl talking in the back. I'm like, ugh. Good one already. Trying to bring up something a little more better color to it. Do this one, I haven't done this one in a while. Listen to this fellow, what he's saying right now. Do you trade with the blue and Frankenstein mix? Did you not hear me say in my demonstration that the blue is under patent pending with a patent? Did you not hear me say that? Now, let me explain something to you. You want to bring up a comment about the Frankenstein mix, uh, Jamie G? I know that's you, Jamie. I know your last name. First things first, let me explain something to you. We're not going to do a trade. We're going to buy your Frankenstein mix as soon as you go into your eBay account and you remove the block. When you remove the block, I will go in and purchase your paint. The fact that you blocked us from the beginning and you refuse to sell us the product clearly shows that you're afraid of you being tested on any of our stuff here. But don't worry about it. We already have two of your screen paints here. I'm talking to Jamie right now. He just popped into the room. I have two of your paints here. We have the UB mix and we have the personal mix. So if, we, if I need to require the Frankenstein, I have a few ties in California. They can do a local pickup or they can basically pay through any way you need to be paid. But... The fact that I have to go through this particular optical courses in order to obtain your product clearly shows that you have something to hide and you do fear having your product here to begin with. All right. All right. So when you're ready to do business like an adult, I would appreciate you opening up your shopping cart, go in and purchase your product and bring it here. Other than that, a trade for the blue versus a Frankenstein. My friend, you just watch me. Take your uh, UB mix, I think that's the darkest you make, and my black silver blended your screen to the point where you couldn't even see it. So 
look at that video first before making that statement. And I seen the color of the Frankenstein, it won't stand. But because you have ignored our request, I did order two different forms of screen paint from two different individuals. We will be doing side-by-side -side demonstrations to see how close they do come to your product. And if that's the case, I will redirect to your customers where they can go and buy the product for much cheaper and a more reasonable shipping costs. With that being said, I have much to do when you have time to basically start acting like an adult and basically make it possible for us to be able to order the paint. Um, I'll talk to you then. Other than that, I must go and goodbye. I don't understand how somebody comes in and complains about he wants to make a trade for the Frankenstein for the blue mix, and, or not even call it blue, blue formula we designed. First things first, your darkest screen paint that you have couldn't even withstand our black silver. Black silver can be Frankenstein. The Frankenstein is under that shade. It's done. But like I said, that's neither here nor there. When you finally unlock the shopping cart, for those you wonder why you're probably saying, what about unlock the shopping cart? Uh, just real quick, real fast update. We tried to order his paint last night. He locked his shopping cart. Uh, so I don't know if I can't place it if it's just me or anybody else is having the same results. But yeah, he wanted to make sure that we did not receive any of his paints at all. And he basically from there locked the cart so we couldn't obtain it. So I have to go through someone over in California uh, to basically try to um, get the paint from him because he's making it that difficult for us to be able to get it. When I was able to go into eBay and purchase paint from several different individuals without a so like I said, if you have something to hide, you wouldn't make it impossible for somebody to obtain what you are basically displaying. You can go on my website, you can order my paints, it's not hard to get. As a matter of fact, I have a container of the 12, which he's been harassing my customers, uh, sending them, bombarding them emails, trying to get them to send over some of the paint and, and trade for his product. So I told my customers, hey, look, if this guy contacts you, give me proof of his email, and then we'll send, you go ahead and send him the paint, give it to him. He'll give you what he's going to give to you, and then you give that to us, and we'll double your order. So since he heard that, he stopped doing that now. So he does little sneaky things, but our website's right there. If he wants the product, he can go on, he can order it. We're not going to block him. We just tried to make that purchase last night and ran into a couple of roadblocks. As I said, I was going to run into, and we can't get the paint from him because he's locking his cart. But that's neither here nor there. We don't care anyway because we have enough here to get, a job, get the, um, de the test done with everybody versus blue. Sorry I had to bring all that up, but yeah, he pops in here from, changes his name, and pops in here from time to time to run his mouth. Just open up your shopping cart and let us purchase the paint. We can buy it right now. Okay. As a matter of fact, Monday morning, I have um, a few friends. Like I said, a few friends over in California. I'm going to actually uh, email them or call a few of them. Hey, look, I want you to pick this up for me. And if they can't get it, make sure your friends can try to get it. No, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it over here. If he's fighting that hard for that paint not to be here, there's a reason why. We'll get it over here. And in the process, you can watch what we have to go through in order to get it from him. So you can see that it's going to be like pulling teeth to get a product from him that he claims is supposed to be so good. Yes, understand this is not an Optima P1 with a million and one something contrast rating. This is a 720p projector. That's way, way below the specifications of this hardware. And it's producing this beautiful image in a fully lit environment, which shows that we don't have to have an overpriced projector to produce an image. Look how far my projector sits back from my screen. We're about probably about two feet away from the screen right now. So I'm doing a long throw. Technically, I'm doing a long throw 
on a fucking short-term projector. Now this screen is 92 inches. I could shrink the image and pull the projector all the way up, but it's more of a challenge to basically pull the projector back. Shrink the image, pull the projector back, keep pulling it back to see exactly, you know, if I can basically stress out the pixels on it. Now later on, I will get a, as a matter of fact, I got the 126 inch in the next room. We gotta throw it on there. Oh, I definitely gotta throw it on the 126 inch. Later on today, I'll come back in and I'll throw it on the big 126 inch technology in there. So Monday morning, my gaming PC will finally be here. Well, it's not a gaming PC. It's kind of like an office PC, but they're made like gaming PCs where whatever they got built into them. And I can finally start putting together my gaming room. I've just been waiting for the PC. The chair literally got here before the PC, which I'm kind of shocked. And we are not going to do a trade for blue. My blue technology is not going under government paperwork. If, this tech, if we would decide to basically run all this paper underneath of it, it would have been out months ago. Actually, it would have been out probably, yeah, around last month. It would have been out. But no, this is going to be locked in with paperwork. So after we lock everything in the paperwork, you're more than welcome to come onto the website and purchase it. But reward, as I explained to you, it is going to have some very heavy paperwork underneath of it. So if you decide to do something stupid, like take the container down and put paint in it, so you'll be violating my patent pending. People don't realize is once you violate a patent, that is a fine up to two hundred fifty thousand to a half a million dollars. And I will follow through with an attorney. All right, let's go for something else. That's why we're locking in individual because I know there's companies I'm going to have to deal with, and I, if you ever dealt with companies, and I have dealt with quite a bit of them. Um, I'm not saying all of them, but. Some We'll do some stuff, man, that have you scratching your head like, really? Like, seriously? You're going to go down that road on me? And, uh, yeah, they'll do some crazy stuff. So you have to have it locked in. Walk in front of them, because keep in mind, they do have the power and they do have the attorneys and everything else needed to get whatever has to be done. You just have to make sure your stuff is locked in good before you walk in there. Get in, if, you can't, if you don't have a patent pending, if you can't afford the patent pending, get at, require an NDA. Require one of those. Get a non disclosure agreement. Because a non disclosure agreement, it's not like a patent, but it will protect you to a certain degree where they can't really touch it or engineer it or person or nothing like that. It'll protect you. And one guy was saying, Oh, but it takes about it takes six so many months you can't get a you can't get a patent that can patent. it's not a patent, it's a patent pending. You have to understand how law works. It's a patent pending, not a patent. It still has the exact same weight if you tamper with it. It's just with a patent pending, it's kind of like if you invent something and you're not really sure if it's going to sell, you know, you put a patent pending on it. It's like a test run one year. After that one year is completed, you can actually apply for the patent if you feel that it's worth it. Instead of you dumping all this money into a patent and the product doesn't sell or something happens or blah, 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 blah. In the process, at least you're not out of a ton of money. Now, there's two ways you can go about the patent pending. You can do it yourself, which is a lot cheaper. But it's a ton of paperwork and you might run into some red tags, some snags and whatever that may make it complicated and difficult for you. Or you can hire an attorney like I did and let him do all the work and all the paperwork, red tape stuff I can't understand and blah, 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 and do it that way. Now, of course, all that involves my filing fees because I pay all that up and everything. That's a bastard. So man, look around your house. You'd be surprised. You'll find objects around your house that will say patent pending right on the side of it. I had Fisher Price bubble more, and on the side of that bubble more, it had patent pending, which is interesting because Fisher Price has the money to be able to get an official patent. All right, we'll let that continue to run. All right, get my hair again here.
That's the cardboard box I painted a couple of days ago. That's a cardboard box. Just to see exactly what I could get away with when I want to paint stuff with this thing. With this stuff. Yep. United States shipping post boxes coated with blue technology. if you want. Yep, cardboard. It has the same technology as all the other screen paints we developed that you can coat it on anything you want. So if I want to make screen out of shipping boxes, which I'm going to do today, I'm actually going to make myself a shipping box projection screen. I think I'm going to coat it with black. I don't want to coat it. I don't think enough boxes to make shipping. I don't want to do it Build me a screen on the boxes today. Do. That run. Look at my cardboard box. I did how beautiful that looks on a cardboard box. Man, I'd make a cool stand with the two on top of that. That'd be kind of cool. Like a flat screen TV on a stand, but it'd all be made out of cardboard. That's quite impressive. We can coat anything we want with it. Now, this was done for demonstrations for um, for my uh, projector, my scanner in the back. This is why these were coated blue. so much confidence in the Frankenstein then all you got to do is open up your shopping cart so we can order it you have no fear of it but since he has a shopping cart locked and he doesn't want to allow us to order from, from him then that shows right there he's just talking for the sake of just talking 
I want to place the order now. So we're going to make a cardboard projection screen. I don't have to use any glue because I got Velcro. I'm going to Velcro it together. That way we don't have, to have any tink lines. This is what we're going to build. Cardboard spots. Got my mind ticking, thinking of something crazy. So, I'm going to build myself a cardboard projection screen. So, this is going to be my screen right here. Now, I can't tape it together. If I tape it together, I'll get the lines in there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Velcro all this together, seal the back up a knife, and this is going to be the base of it right here. So, I'm measuring the boxes, how many large boxes I'm going to need to make the base. 
So that's how we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna make myself a nice cardboard screen, something I can move around the house with it. I'm gonna run the PS4 off it, do some gaming off it tonight. So that's my next project right there. Cause I'm looking at it like, wow, it looks really good on cardboard. It's made a cardboard projection screen. Now, let me tell you something. Usually when I paint boxes, they ripple, but these particular boxes don't ripple, get no lines on them, nothing. So they, they paint on really well. As you're seeing right here, same boxes in the video on the blue technology. So yes, I can make myself a cardboard projection screen, which I'm gonna be doing today. I'll tell you, I'll take it. I am never ever bored. It's all install speakers in it too. I'm gonna to order some speakers. I'm gonna install speakers into it. So so it says, hey, well, what can I paint with this stuff? Well, I'm gonna check out my cardboard projection screen in the back. Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna paint the back the base of it black. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, um, I wanna let this play a little more. Then I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna start working on my project over here because I've got some ideas flowing through my head right now. And we're gonna do a cardboard screen. Yeah. So, I'm gonna come out of here. I'm gonna build this cardboard screen. Got it all mapped out on how I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna throw some bed lights on the back of it, some speakers and stuff like that. Oh, this is gonna be cool. So, I got a kind of idea, because that's coated in cardboard. And I said, you know, I'm just gonna throw this up against the screen, just to show not only can we just 
this stuff is going to be versus everything we can get our hands on, but you paint anything, you stuff on anything you want. Of course, we do this all the time. So I'm going to come out of here. Thank you for watching the video demonstration. Um, next time I come back on, I'm going to have a cardboard projection screen. Thank you all for your time. I got to go, and God bless.